I just want to start out by saying today that every one of you guys is absolutely incredible. Let's give a massive round of applause to you brave people. Woo! When Josh said freezing for freedom, he was not exaggerating. So once again, another round of applause to you guys. Holy moly. I say it every weekend, guys, be the change. And that is every one of you guys, every single protest in Canada, every single protest worldwide. Let's give a huge round of applause to humanity. Woo! Yeah. All right, guys. Do you accept the new, no the new normal? Do you accept the new abnormal? Will you ever accept the new abnormal? Let's let this government know loud and clear. No new normal. No new normal. No new normal. No new normal. All right, guys, is this your country? Are you the taxpayers? Are you the boss? Is that your employees? Yeah. It's time they do their job. All right, guys, let's invite up Melanie for the national anthem. Woo, Melanie! Yeah. Woo. All right, Melanie. Yeah. Oh, it's so awesome to see this many unmasked, smiling faces. Even if your teeth are chattering, it's still beautiful. <laughs> Please join me. Oh, Canada. Our home and native land, true patriot love, in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Right on, thank you, Melanie. Awesome. Awesome. Right on, huge round of applause for Melanie. All right, let's give another round of applause for Action for Alberta, right? Alberta Action! Alberta Action! <laughs> I screwed it up. Hey, thank you so much for the hot chocolate. They bring hot chocolate for us every weekend, so thank you guys. Thank you so much. If anyone wants to warm up, there's fresh hot chocolate there for you guys. All right, guys, do you accept the lockdowns? Do you accept the lockdowns? Will you be locked down again? Will Canada be locked down again? And the lockdown and the lockdown and the lockdown and the lockdown all right you guys are awesome Okay, I want to give one more round of applause to the sheriffs. You guys are awesome, sheriffs. They've been protecting us since April, keeping us safe, keeping us standing here strong for Canada. So huge round of applause for the sheriffs. Thank you, guys. I'd also like to extend a thank you to the EPS. Thank you for standing behind our rights and our freedoms. We love you guys, and thank you for your support. So thank you, EPS, as well. Thank you. And I want to give the biggest round of applause to our marshals. Our marshals every weekend keep us safe on our marches, so let's give a huge warm round of applause for our marshals. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. All right, let's welcome up Josh, the angry Albertan. Woo! Come on now, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. We got a clown nose now. I, I could have gotten a red one. Hello! Thank 
you for braving the minus 32 degree wind chill to stand together as one for liberty! Are you sick of the lies and gaslighting yet? Kenny has given us his four-stage reopening plan, a plan that we probably won't ever see the end of. Restaurants are set to open on Monday. But don't get too excited. You won't be having a pint with your buddies for weeks, if not months, if ever, frankly. For a restaurant to open to in-person dining, they will require contact tracing information. You will only be allowed to dine with members of your own household. Unless your household is larger than six people, in which case you won't be able to dine together at all. Don't get your hopes up about the gyms either. They will only be reopening to one-on-one -on -one personal training. So unless you've got the money to pay for a personal training session, you ain't going to be using the gym for weeks or months. This absolute rubbish reopening plan will in fact be the final nail in the coffin for so many businesses. The gyms would probably be better off left closed entirely. At least then they would qualify for some more of that free government money. Now that they are open, they won't get that support either. This clown government will supposedly ease restrictions on kids' sports on Monday as well. No. Except they're lying. All activities must be social distanced in groups under 10. No actual games are allowed. How is this easing? Churches won't see any changes until phase three, which at the earliest will be the end of March. That is also when you may be allowed to socially gather in your homes again. Maybe. I guess at that point, you may actually be able to go for a pint with friends again, possibly. You know, Chairman Mao didn't even go this far. The only difference between Mao and Kenny at this point is actually murdering people. I guess that comes later. Or if you realize that COVID has potential treatments available, like hydroxychloroquine, then perhaps Kenny is murdering people now. Forcing us to wait for a vaccine with more risks than the virus itself could also be considered murderous. Of course, it is no secret that viruses mutate. Every virus mutates. That is why we don't have a vaccine for the common cold or even a truly effective flu vaccine. Yet they are setting you up to be locked down forever based on the mutation of the COVID-19 virus. This will continue in perpetuity. Wash, rinse, and repeat every year forever. There will be no end unless the people rise up. And for minus 34, this is amazing. <laughs> Kenny keeps pointing to other jurisdictions and claiming that at least we're not as locked down as so-and-so, only to turn around in the following weeks and apply even stricter restrictions than those other jurisdictions had in the first place. Wake up. Wake up! Wake up! The only way this ends is if we end it ourselves. The Whistle Stop Cafe and other businesses like them are leading the fight. And I hear someone just told me this morning they have an angry Albertan burger. It, it's named after all of us! The uh, AHS sought and was granted a closure order in court against the whistle stop and the owner, Chris. This order means that Chris could be arrested and charged with contempt of court. He is facing jail time. He is facing huge fines. They could lock him out of his business. We need more people like Chris! We need thousands of them. Gym owners, where are you? Open your gyms completely now. What do you have to lose? If you wait another month, will you even have the resources available left to fight? You have nothing left to lose at this point. They cannot jail everyone. The RCMP have visited the whistle stop since the court order was issued and they left without incident. 
What does this tell you? Even AHS doesn't want it to go that far. Keep pushing back. They think that by dropping these little tokens of potential freedom in front of business owners, they can quell an uprising. I think they are mistaken. What do you think? Why anyone believes anything Kenny says anymore is beyond my comprehension. Open your doors now! Okay, some notes about today. Speeches must be less than 10 minutes. David. <laughs> you may be cut off if you are over time, and I'll do it too. Please respect the guidelines we have laid out out of fairness for everyone. All speeches must be approved by Karen Dixon no later than Tuesday, David. <laughs> During the march, please obey the instructions of our lovely marshals. Any problems on the march need to be reported to a marshal. Please ignore the counter-protesters. If there even are any today, I think he already wussed out. Let's give a cheer to Megaphone Guy for leaving already. <laughs> Uh, people like Rickshaw Dave, uh, they want you to be rude. They want to film it and put it on the internet to hurt our cause. If you care about this cause, please leave Rickshaw Dave alone. Anything can and will be used against all of us. Be safe, stay warm. Let's have an awesome day! And one more cheer for the EPS and the sheriffs for keeping us safe for all this time. Thank you for coming. All right, let's give a huge round of applause for Josh, the angry Albertan. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for everything you do, brother. Woo! Yeah! Jumpy Josh. <laughs> My friends, do you love your freedom? Do you love your rights? Will you stand for your rights and freedoms? Let's let this government know loud and clear that our rights are not up for grabs. There is no debate. Our rights are not up for grabs. There is no debate. Our rights are not up for grabs. There is no debate, period. Our rights belong to us and it can never be taken away. All right, guys, let's invite up Brad. Come on down, Brad. Woo, Brad. Hello, my name is Brad, and I am a Canadian Army veteran. I served with one PPCLI and was based right here in Edmonton, Alberta. During my service, I was trained by the Department of National Defense in Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical Warfare. In battalion, I took place in large-scale field exercises where we simulated biological attacks. Decontamination showers and mop for protective equipment are standard operating procedure. There are four levels of protection when dealing with nuclear, chemical, and biological warfare. These levels are MOP 0 to MOP 4, MOP 4 being the highest. MOP 4 includes a full bodysuit worn over your uniform, gloves, and a full face mask equipped with special cartridges. You require MOP 4 level protection to deal with a biological threat such as a man-made virus. <sighs> Sorry, one second. <laughs> Perhaps the Department of National Defense should get rid of their Mop 4 protective equipment and cut up some old shirts. They would save the taxpayers millions. A viral particle is approximately one one thousandth the width of a hair. A viral particle has no problem slipping through your cloth or paper mask and catching a ride on a draft around the store. Viral particles do not social distance. Lowering people's immune systems by sanitizing and isolating them, then funneling them th through small numbers of places is how you spread disease. I am calling on all Armed Forces members and veterans 
I am calling on all Canadians. It's time to stand for the freedoms heroes have served and died for. Whoever you are, take at least one day a week to stand for these sacrifices. Do something great and make your mark on history. Time is running short. The time grows near when tyranny will rule and freedom will lie in ruin. Make this a time we stand on guard for thee. Awesome, another huge round of applause for Brad. Thank you, my friend. Awesome, thank you for your service, Brad. And let's do a huge round of applause for the military of Canada. Thank you for your service, our brothers and sisters. Woo! Awesome. My friends, do you accept the new abnormal? No. Louder, do you accept the new abnormal? No. Will you ever accept the new abnormal? No. Do you want your family to grow up in a free country? Yeah. Do you want to live in a free country? Yeah. Let's let our government and Jason Kenney know loud and clear, no new normal. No new normal. No new normal. No new, no new normal! No new normal! No new normal! All right, thank you guys. Also, I'd like to give a huge round of applause to everybody watching and partaking every weekend online. Thank you guys, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Please, people online, share this. Share this like crazy right now. Share this video. Huge round of applause one more time for our online people. Thank you guys, you guys are amazing. All right, let's invite up Brent. Welcome, Brent. Come on up. Yeah, Brent. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Anyone for surfing? Whoa. Whoa. So now for the comedy routine. Okay, I am not touching anything. <laughs> I can't believe that so many came out today. Thank you so very much. I hate to say it, Calgary, but we're here in Edmonton at minus 31. We, got, we have to work together. And we've got to do it soon. And I can't believe looking across the crowd, and if you can recall some of my previous talks, I think now you understand what my father and his shipmates went through <clears throat> on the North Atlantic, fighting for our freedoms in weather like this. And here we are at minus 31, letting them know that we're standing for our freedoms and our rights. And we're standing up when so many are not. And we need them. Because we're sticking it out in weather like this and putting ourselves on the line for this country. And like Brad said, I want you all to think about what it is that the true north, strong and free, means for you. What does it mean to stand on guard for thee? Because with the work that I did in my career, I saw a lot of corruption. I worked internal security and I could pick it out. No, thankfully my father gave me a good heart and a good nature as to how to get through this life. But what I'm seeing now, I think what we're all seeing now, is how is this rolling out? And it has a lot to do with money, greed, blackmail. How in the heck does this entire world come down globally and roll this out? How is it that so many of our forefathers, and like Brad said, even he, put, he risked his life 
join in the military to protect this country against what exactly is happening in this country and across the world now. There was a book written after World War II talking about the, how the Nazis were able to roll everything out and how Hitler did it. And do you know what it took? His bureaucrats. And I spent many, many years as a bureaucrat. And I can tell you, I can see how it happens. Okay? There are the corrupt individuals that will take bribes, and it happens. I don't think I'm telling you anything out of school. And then there's the ones, and they're much like us, They've got a mortgage, they've got their kids, they've got their families, and they're standing up for them, and they're damn scared about losing their jobs, their houses, and it's tough for them to come out. But it's because of people that are not standing up against the tyrants in buildings like this across the world that this is happening. So unless those people stand up and start to realize what's going to happen if this goes against us, which it's starting to. They have to make a decision, and all of us are having to make a decision. What side of history do you want to be on? I've already chosen it, I think. And I wear this poppy, and you know why I wear this poppy, and it's to stand up for the people that sacrificed for our freedoms before and this is our generations we got to do it that's what they say every generation has to stand up for freedom because it's not given to us all right so when you're talking to people realize that they have families they have homes and they're scared but i can tell you that there's a number of groups they want to destroy our country. They want to break it up. And I want you to know that if you are approached within this setting here, we have one focus. And if anyone feels uncomfortable about maybe someone approaching them, uh, because this isn't about money here. This is, this is pure volunteerism, OK? There are groups looking for money, looking for memberships. No, no. This is about what we need to do. Freedom! All right? So I'm going to conclude with one thing. And I'm probably eating into David's time, so he's going to give me a hook later. <laughs> ah, the, OK, I didn't get the hook. All right. So every once in a while, I say a little saying for all of you. I want you to think about what humanity means to you, what freedom means to you, and what compassion and empathy are. Because I think we've lost it. I haven't. Most of us here haven't. But if we just really think about what that means to all of us. You never know when someone may catch a dream from you. You never know when a little word or something you may do may open the windows of a mind that seeks the light. The way you live may not matter at all, but you never know, it might. And just in case, it could be that another's life through you might, most, sorry, might possibly change for the better with a broader and brighter view. It seems it might be worth a try at pointing the way to the truth. Of course, it may not matter at all, but then again, it might. I ask all of you to be patient with people, the people we call the sheeple. We have been so blessed by the sheriffs and the police department in Edmonton, and I just, as many of you do, just want to thank them. Because there are those people that I mentioned earlier that feel that all government employees need to be attacked. That's not the case. They're like us. They got families. They're trying to put bread on the table and keep a roof over their kids' heads. So let's give them a little bit of compassion and understand that they are with us. 
And when the time comes, hopefully it doesn't, but they're going to back all of us up. So have patience. And remember, we're here for our freedoms and our rights, so take care. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Brent. Another massive round of applause for Brent. Thank you, sir. You are awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. We're going to do something extra special here today. Every day is extra special, but today is extra, extra special. So we have one gentleman has joined us throughout this year. He's brought so much love and awesomeness to this group, and I have all my love and respect goes to this gentleman, David Dixon. Thank you, David. Let's give a massive round of applause for David Dixon. David, 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 David. Just turns out it's that handsome man's birthday. Woo, David. All right, I'd like to welcome up my good friend, Melanie. She would like to sing happy birthday to you, David. And we're all gonna sing happy birthday for David. So let's get our voices together all as one and make David feel extra special today. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, please help me sing to this wonderful man here. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear David. Happy birthday to you. Awesome. Thank you again, David. You are amazing, my friend. Let's give one more massive round of applause for David. Woo! Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I want to invite up Karen Dixon. Another round of applause for Karen Dixon. Woo! Before Josh hauls me off with a shepherd's crook, because we know that's going to happen, right? The speech that I'm giving today is not my own. That's my, co that's my cop out clause. My name is Karen Dixon. I am a retired teacher from the UK and a Canadian citizen. On December the 6th, 2020, I was asked by a group of concerned healthcare professionals in Alberta to speak out on their behalf. They have been threatened by their employees, sorry, by their employers and professional bodies with dismissal, loss of their professional licenses and irreparable damage to their reputation if they speak out. This is an update that they have asked me to share with you today. Good afternoon, everyone. We truly wish we could be here today in person. It is so hard to write these words, yet be unable to speak them from our own mouths. We miss the smiles and energy that your support brings. We were so honored to see how many people were able to view and share our previous message. It is comforting to know that people are listening and we appreciate so much your honesty and bravery to continue to share the truth. As we approach the one year mark since the pandemic began, sadly, not much has changed within our hospitals and healthcare system. There are still empty beds all over, empty units and empty field hospitals. The ICU and overall hospital capacities have never been so low. The media and government continue to hide the truth, pushing the fear narrative on hospital staff and the ill-informed public. It has gotten so out of hand that medical professionals are basing treatment and care decisions on what the me news media reports. 
We would like to call on these so-called professionals again and ask, where has your medical training failed you? Where is your sense of professional duty? What happened to evidence-based medicine and critical evaluation of research? Above all else, where is your humanity? We see medical staff afraid to enter rooms or units with COVID positive or even COVID potential patients. They do not come within any reasonable distance. They do not lay a hand on anyone. They cannot even see the whites of their patients' eyes to complete a proper assessment. Unit managers are so terrified of having an outbreak under their watch that they lock patients in their room for 48 hours if they have a new headache. We have heard of physicians telling patients with obstructive lung disease that they should be wearing a mask when out alone outdoors. We have heard of physicians forbidding fa patients to see their families, children and grandchildren for fear of asymptomatic transmission. Would you take medical advice from a doctor who bases their information from a reporter or politician? This is pure insanity. AHS management is an absolute disgrace. They are more worried about their career advancements and salary increases than actually taking care of their staff. Mental and physical health is crumbling around us. One year of psychological warfare based on fear is taking its toll on staff in every department at every site. There is absolutely zero support available for staff who disagree with policies. And if you dare speak up, you are immediately blacklisted. Emails are sent with a gentle reminder of the whistleblower policies and appropriate use of social media. Unions are completely useless since AHS has declared a public health emergency. Our contracts and rights are completely nullified thanks to some bureaucrat from whatever zone, in whatever position, that has decided we are in a public health emergency. This is not something that is voted on or evidence-based. It is management calling this an emergency, which essentially revokes any power the unions may hold to defend our working conditions. Let's talk about the real public health emergency. Every single non-COVID patient, everyone else with a medical condition or need for treatment or diagnosis in any other capacity. What do we see? If you don't have COVID, you don't matter. If you aren't a potential COVID case, you aren't important. If your COVID swab is positive, we don't investigate further. This is medical malpractice and negligence on a very large scale. Patients tell us all the time how unimportant they feel because they are ignored if they don't have COVID. 
their access to medical services is limited or non-existent. Many medical, many medical practitioners in all fields have moved towards telephone or online meetings. Since when can you accurately assess a patient through the telephone or without actually putting your hands or eyes on someone? And can someone please explain how any doctor in modern society can honestly believe we have zero cases of the flu this year? People are suffering. People are dying. Heart and lung disease cancer, stroke, suicide, overdose, domestic abuse, sepsis, flu. This list only scratches the surface of the massive number of deaths due to improper medical care. How can anyone ignore these patients? When we first embarked down the dark road of COVID-19, our own premier, publicly commented on the rising deaths due to fentanyl overdose. Mr. Kenny, why has your opinion suddenly changed? Why have you all of a sudden dismissed fentanyl tragedies and jumped on the COVID bandwagon? If the media would report daily deaths of all the previous mentioned illnesses, perhaps the public would come to understand that there is a far greater health emergency on our hands. In Canada, with public access to universal health care, how can we knowingly block services that could save lives? Who gave you the right to prioritize COVID above all other health concerns? Lastly, we must address the issue of the experimental vaccine being pushed on healthcare workers. It is our basic human right to say no to this. Managers are keeping track of who receives it. Full-time staff are paid overtime wages to get vaccinated on non-working hours. That's right, taxpayers. You are funding this. They certainly don't pay us to get the flu shot on our own time. So why compensate the COVID shot? The division created by this cannot be undone. People are genuinely afraid of those who choose not to get it. Managers have the audacity to tell us we are protecting patients and co-workers by getting vaccinated. This is absolutely false. Yeah. This experimental vaccine does not prevent transmission. Yeah. Let me say this again for those who may not understand. The vaccine has no ability to protect anyone, including yourself, from getting COVID. Yeah. Yeah. The official statement released by AHS says exactly so. Common sense would tell any sane person that injecting yourself with something that has never been tested beyond a few months may show negative effects later down the road. There has been no long-term testing on this. It may not, and for the sake of those who've already received it, we absolutely hope it will not. The point is, we don't know. So when we do not know for certain what the potential outcomes may be, is it morally or ethically right to encourage something that we don't know about?
To tell people it is safe when we honestly do not know. We were told about a conversation amongst a group of specialized physicians here in Edmonton whose influence and practice extends across Canada. They were discussing the messaging surrounding the upcoming vaccine and wanted to ensure they were on the same page when it came to what they were telling patients. Right off that start, one may be nervous to think that doctors in a specialty field who are supposed to be national experts in their area need to make a decision based on what others think? Do your own research. The even more concerning fact was that these doctors all agreed they did not know what effect the vaccine would have on this patient population. And despite the fact that they openly did not know how it would affect patients' mortality, they thought it should be okay and agreed to recommend their patients get vaccinated ASAP. It should be okay? Is that what doctors told expectant mothers when prescribing thalidomide way back when? Is that not what experimental studies are for? Would you be comfortable taking a medical treatment that your doctor has absolutely no idea of the potential outcome? Again, we are not saying this vaccine is harmful. We are saying we do not know. Any physician with any sense of conscience has the moral and professional obligation to tell their patients just that. We do not know. When medical professionals do not disclose the extent of their knowledge or lack thereof of knowledge, this removes the patient's ability to decide for themselves. Informed consent is one of the most important facets of medical treatment. You cannot give legal consent if you are not fully informed. A physician who recommends treatment without telling the patient the details of what we don't know is in no way informed consent. This is wrong. This is negligent with the potential for death. This is criminal. In closing, we extend our thanks to all medical professionals in Canada and around the world who are standing up and speaking out. We admire and support those of you who have the ability to tell the truth. We are with those of you who cannot. Please do not give up. As alone as you may feel in your situation or workplace, please know there are people nearby and across the globe who are fighting for our rights. We must come together to share the truth and support each other. Behind the mask or out in the open, we are with you. Awesome, let's give Karen a massive round of applause. Woo! Thank you, Karen. That was awesome. All right, guys, you guys want to do something extra special and super fun again? Awesome. This is going to warm me up a little bit, I promise. Okay, guys, like last weekend, I need every single one of your voices, all your energy at one time. All right, guys, let's give a massive round of applause and shout out to every single Canadian across this country. Woo! 
Yeah, we stand behind you. Every Canadian from every province, we stand behind you. Woo, do you stand behind all Canadians? Will you fight for the rights? Will you fight for the freedom? Woo, all right, okay, let's do it again. This one's for the sheriff and the EPS. Woo, thank you for standing behind us. Woo, it takes a lot of guts to stand behind us, guys. There's a lot of police out there with a lot of pressure on them to do the wrong thing. And the EPS and the sheriffs are standing behind us. So another one for them. Woo, yeah. All right, okay, two more, guys. One more now for the everybody online watching and taking part every weekend on the digital protest. Woo, yeah, thank you. Share this video, guys. Share, 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 share. Awesome. Okay, and obviously the biggest one for you guys. Woo! Thank you guys for freezing for freedom. You guys are amazing. All right, you guys. Let's welcome up Kareen. Two more short speeches, guys, and we're going to march, okay? And we're going to march shorter today. So welcome, Kareen. Welcome, Kareen. Yeah! So many children, teachers, and administrators are suffering under COVID measures. I will be charitable and say these measures were initially agreed to by well-meaning people. But enough time has passed that we can see the flaws in the system that has been set up in the name of the greater good. On top of suffering under extreme safety measures, for many students and even some teachers, schools have become a place of threats intimidation and bullying if anyone dares question the practices and procedures in place all in the name of safety and well-being. Across the province, school boards are interpreting the world of Alberta Health Services in different ways. Then in turn, each school administrator interprets how they are going to carry out the recommendations from their school board. Schools and school boards have taken it upon themselves to exceed the recommendations many times since in-person learning started back up in September. With an aim to make data-driven choices about COVID measures, the privacy of students and their families, teachers and administrators is now up for grabs. Trustees looking to prove or disprove asymptomatic spread in schools are eager to implement a more thorough track and trace system. This COVID crisis has shown us the end results of COVID measures time and time again return the opposite results of what was promised. Support for COVID initiatives is secured with the promise of providing more freedom, improved health and less restrictions for our teachers and their students. The reality has been less freedom, declining health and more restrictions. Even as many schools try their best to be welcoming, safe and caring, the current policies that they operate under have created a dehumanizing experience for children in schools and those struggling online. Who can children and parents turn to when their reports of harm resulting from COVID measures seem to fall on deaf ears? Regardless of how sympathetic those ears are, if it has no power to change anything in the new COVID status quo, you might as well be talking to a brick wall. The Alberta Ministry of Education has hundreds of staff working under them to further their aims for Alberta. The Alberta School Board Trustee Association looks out for the interests of the School Board Trustees of Alberta. The Alberta Teachers Association includes the union that protects and speaks for the teachers of Alberta. What Alberta organization or union or association speaks for students and their parents who are suffering as a result of all the COVID measures agreed to by all the bureaucratic entities I just mentioned. Is that why students and their parents are now taking to their sports venues, to protest, to social media, to desperately seek out support? I was excited to hear that a group of parents and students are planning to join us next week to speak. Parents and their children need to be heard. It is time we had an Alberta group that coordinated our common interest to correct a system that continues to exchange our children's future against constantly moving goalposts based on faulty modeling and very disputable science. 
Do you think the price being paid in school is a fair trade to achieve COVID zero? No. Do you like the kind of future the COVID measures are creating for our children? No. I call on student groups, parents, educators, and everyone willing to lend their skills and efforts to make a change in direction in our school system. We are stronger together. My name is Corrine, and I am organizing a team to better coordinate our efforts. Please find me in the crowd, and we can talk about how you can get involved in standing up for our kids. Thank you for being here today and for supporting our children. Awesome, another massive round of applause for Corinne. Thank you, Corinne. Woo, thank you so much. All right, my friends, let's hear from my good friend, Henry, right there. He's, gonna, he's got a speech prepared for you guys. This man has been there since April, every weekend, with his flag and his megaphone supporting us and standing proud. So he wants to say a beautiful message for you guys. Let's give him a huge round of applause. Thank you, sir, for everything you do. You are amazing, buddy. Trudeau, Hinsho, Alberta Health Services, Iveson, and Public Media. You are the real virus. You are destroying our country, province, and city, us and our families. You are corrupted liars. You are traitors. You have people's blood on your hands. You you are enemy of all Canadians. You are criminals. You all should resign immediately before you do more damage to us Canadians, to our country. The human rights and freedom is, are under attack. People wake up today because tomorrow might be too late. Trudeau, you are the biggest threat to our country. You are corrupted liar and thief. You are selling us off to globalists, to United Nations organizations. You don't care about Canadians. You care only about your own pockets. This is a treason, ladies and gentlemen. Trudeau for treason, Trudeau for treason. That was awesome. Let's give my friend another massive round of applause. Wow. Wow, you got to come speak more often, my friend. That was amazing. Like I said, you've been here since April. That guy's a true leader right there. Standing strong for all Canadians. Thank you again. You're awesome, man. My friends, do you accept the lockdown? No. Liar, do you accept the lockdown? Let's send Jason Kenny a message loud and clear. And the lockdown. And the lockdown. And the lockdown. And the lockdown. All right, guys. I want to use all your voices one more time, guys. Make this the loudest one yet. For our marshals. Woo! Thank you, marshals. You guys are incredible, man. Keeping us safe every time. We appreciate every marshal. You guys are so awesome. All right, you guys. Let's invite up our last speaker, the birthday boy, David Dixon. Woo! Make some noise for David. Hey, it's my birthday. I get special privileges. So, first of all, before I start my speech, um, I've been researching what's been going on for over a year now, since December of 2019, when I saw things and heard things that move more into Brad's territory and experience. Uh, 
to be perfectly frank with what I knew about this, I said to Karen at the beginning, either this is the most dangerous virus on the planet that's going to kill, out, kill an awful lot of us, or it's something worse. It turned out to be something worse. It turned out to be, at, at worst, a new coronavirus. We get them every year. And governments took advantage of it. And to give them the benefit of the doubt, they at best put as much thought into their plans as people were putting into buying toilet paper. When I realized what was happening, I wasn't sure I was going to make it to this birthday, to be honest with you. And being here right now, having gone through another year and had another birthday, has nothing to do with the government. It has nothing to do with any of the doctors. I've avoided them like the plague all year. Standing up here right now and being as healthy as I am has everything to do with every single one of you. If it wasn't for these Saturdays, I wouldn't have made it through this. You are what makes life living. You are what is going to save us all. Because they're not. And those people there are not till they start standing up. So give you all, all of yourselves, and you online as well, give yourselves a round of applause. And it's your fault I sometimes go over 10 minutes. <laughs> so right, back to what I wanted to talk about. You've heard today about all of the challenges and questions about COVID and the response and how it's going to take more than just us standing up here. It's going to take the people who are just going along to stand up. That includes my colleagues in the police. That includes Brad's colleagues in the armed forces. That includes the prosecutors. That includes the judges. We can forget about the politicians and the bureaucrats because they are, by definition, corrupt. So the rest of you, that also includes all of the businesses, all of the businesses from care homes to coffee shops to Costco and everything. You might want to read Order 42 2020, Section 24H. Yeah, I can remember it. You better have read it if you run a business. If you're working for a business, you better have read it. The government has told you, you are required to do a risk assessment before you force your workers or anybody else to wear a mask. Have you done that? Because if you haven't, you could be criminally negligent. This speech I gave last week has already garnered some attention from serving police officers. So I'm expanding these comments. Every one of you running a business who's intimidating your staff, be very careful about intimidation. And intimidation can be as simple as you need to put the mask on if you want to keep on working here. That is criminal intimidation. If you have not done your research, we have kids walking around here that have done more research than businesses. We've got kids walking around here that have done more research than prosecutors and police and certainly more than the politicians. You don't get a pass anymore. It is time every single business owner starts to worry about the consequences of following orders that make no sense. Stop worrying about what AHS is going to do to you 
and start worrying about what's going to happen if you make someone sick. If you force somebody out of a job, they could have a criminal claim against you if you intimidated them. So as a risk analysis, have you actually checked to see if this virus can be stopped by the mask? I suggest you go ask Brad. He might be able to show you what you would need to wear. Just because there's a piece of paper with Dina Hinshaw's name on the bottom of it does not make it a fact. The judge that issued the court order against the Whistle Stop Cafe this week, did you actually follow up on what the grounds were for the actual closure order itself? Just because somebody from AHS gives you a piece of paper, did you check that there was any validity or any evidence behind that? If somebody turns up with just a speeding ticket, and the person says, I'm not guilty. Do you just convict them because the police officer says so? If somebody in this crowd cried rape or murder, would you get convicted just because somebody said so? So why is just because somebody said so good enough to shut down the planet? Dina Hinshaw, at the top of every single one of your orders that you use to terrorise the people. It says you have started an investigation and you have the evidence. Well, every single judge on this, in this province should be asking, nay, demanding to see that evidence before you rule on one more case. Catherine Fraser, you have a sworn duty to look at that evidence and provide it to the public. Dina Hinshaw continues to refuse. It is time for you to step in or you are contributing. Either do your job or step down. Every single chief of police in this province, have you seen the evidence that backs up these tickets your officers are handing out? If not, you are not buying toilet paper you need to use more brain cells and you need to see the evidence. If I don't see chiefs of police and the chiefs of prosecutors all standing up this week and demanding to see the evidence that has shut down society, that puts their officers in danger every single week, then they are criminally negligent. It is time that we stopped participating in these clinical trials, this medical experiment that has been forced upon us by politicians, bureaucrats, and the most corrupt in society. When you are told to fit a medical device, and by definition, if a mask or face covering is designed to prevent the transmission of a virus, it is a medical device by design. If you are forced to wear one, you are participating in a medical experiment. Did you consent? Will you consent? Then no. now we are talking about war crimes. Yeah. Yeah. The vaccine, the pretend 
vaccine that doesn't do anything but make people sick. They don't hide that fact. They tell you about it. But they don't tell you that you don't have to take it. They say, everybody has to take it if we're going to get out. And then they say, well, you're not going to get out. The PCR test, they admit, doesn't work. The new test they're bringing in, the lateral flow test, is even worse. But they use it to lock us down. This is an experiment. We are all participating. It is time to stop participating. And anybody, anybody who assists in the partic participation of a war crime, anybody who intimidates someone criminally, it is time for you to be held to task. So now, every one of you out there, from police officers to business owners to care workers, care workers I heard today are telling people in the care homes, you're not allowed to have a visitor. Where's your care now, Kenny? Did you not pay these care workers enough with that $63 million? because you certainly didn't pay them enough to start caring about the residents. And those, those care workers who are making those statements, again, with about as much thought as somebody buying a roll of toilet paper, it is time you went and read those orders. You are committing an offence under the Provincial Health Act, and you should be prosecuted. It is time that the people out there started to be more afraid of the consequences of not doing research and not knowing what they're doing. It is time that they started to realise that listening to Dina Hinshaw's speeches is not research. It is not due diligence. And to fail to do more is criminal. I'm not supposed to get upset. I'm, actually, my birthday was yesterday. But, although I was born in England, so technically it was today. <laughs> anyway, it's probably time that you all started to warm up. Um, go out for a walk. And thanks, everybody, again. And thanks, everybody, for keeping me around. Oh, and my, my wife had something to do with that as well. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. How about one more round of applause for David Dixon? Woo! Yeah! Do you guys want to march? Do you want to show Canada that people will stand for freedom? Yeah! yeah. All right. Okay, we have one small announcement. For, uh, for an upcoming protest this weekend. So welcome up, Benita. She got a quick service announcement for us. Thank you, Benita. Everybody, I am fired up for freedom. How about you? Okay, I got inspired by the angry Albertan, so I'm having my own protest. It's happening in Westlock on Thursday, and you're all invited to join them. Westlock is a town about an hour and a bit north of here. Please come to the protest. I'm promoting online, promoting on Facebook. I'd love to have you all there cheering and supporting it. This will be the first protest in Westlock in forever. I've already got tons of support. It's going to be awesome. So I just want to tell you that I am fired up for freedom. Yeah. And the theme of the protest next Thursday at 12 noon is enough is enough. Awesome. Thank you, Benita. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Thank you for standing up and being a leader in your community and standing up for all Canadians. Thank you, Benita. Thank you so much. 
And you can all do this. Everybody watching out here. It's up to you to start this in your hometown and all the small towns, all the small communities. We can do this, guys. And everybody here will support you guys. So get your word out. Get the message out. Advertise your protests. And we will all be there standing behind you. Thank you to everybody standing up for freedom. You guys are amazing. And most of all, guys, thank you guys for coming out today and freezing for freedom. You guys are incredible. Let's give another round of applause to everybody online. Thank you, guys. Please share this. Please share this, guys. All right, guys, do you want to march? Do you accept the new abnormal? Neither do I. Okay, guys, like usual, let's do the same thing as... Oh, oh that's right. There's more hot chocolate, guys. More hot chocolate. Let's give another round of applause for Alberta for action, right? Is that right? Uh, Alberta action. Thank you, Alberta action, for the hot chocolate every weekend. They're awesome. Thank you, guys. So get your hot chocolate once around. So guys, go ahead and mingle like usual. When we're marching, let's defer to the marshals. They are our guides, so we don't move unless they say to move. They'll watch out for ice for us. If we say any uh, suspicious activity, please tell the marshals. Let them know. We're getting better every week, guys. It's because of the marshals, and it's because of you guys. We're becoming more efficient as we go here. So let's keep it peaceful. Let's keep it loving. If people flip us the little birdie, I'm not going to do it. If they flip us the birdie, we, we say thank you. We love you. We'll fight for you. We'll fight for your family. You know what? It's only a matter of time before they realize that this government has betrayed them. So will we stand there for them? We'll be waiting for them, right? That's right, guys. Okay, go ahead and mingle for 10, and we'll get rolling like usual, guys. Thank you.